Hey guys, it's coffee time. I love this mug so much, by the way. I just love how he's just like, hey. Although I've been using this as a coaster. So when I try to put him in there, it's kind of like, oh, how do I make you fit? Doesn't always work out, but that's okay. It's worth it to have a little guy crawling around the side of my cup. I think it's so cute. It is almost Game of Thrones time. Yes, I'm ready. My hair is ready, ready for Game of Thrones. Although it's terrible timing right now because some of you guys have seen it because of the, the time differences. Some of you guys have seen it. I have not yet seen it, which makes me really sad because that means that I have to kind of ban myself from like Twitter and Tumblr. I just, I just straight up can't go on those because people are tweeting things about it. Tumblr, at least I can avoid, I can avoid certain tags. I can just refuse to look at my dashboard in case one of my friends posts something. And then I can look at specific tags instead. So then maybe I can avoid it. Korra? People jump on Korra so quick. The second a Korra episode's out, it's like, by the way, I hear a million gifs of this. And I go, nope. Unfortunate. Really unfortunate. So you have to, you have to know. You have to know how to avoid. But with Twitter, it's hard, man. People just tweet whatever they want and then it's floating right in front of your face and you get so angry. If you're me, you get so angry. <sighs> also, I think that uh, the Reichenbach Fall just showed for Americans uh, the last BBC Sherlock episode. I hope that many of you cried. I hope that there were tears everywhere. The episode is so, uh, it's so emotionally intense. It's out of control. Oh, but anyway, back to Game of Thrones. Sorry. So uh, I have a lot of friends who have told me that since there, there are only three episodes left, a single tear, but I've been told that because there are only three episodes left and if you've read the book, apparently they have to shove a lot into these last three episodes. So I'm wondering if it's going to feel rushed or if it's going to feel, if they're, if it's, if they're going to make some of it bleed into the next season, which I'd really rather they not, but I guess we'll see. I'm really glad that I never read the books. I'm really glad that I never read ahead because I love, I love every week just being like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Because it's so intense every single episode I'm just like really excited for yes also uh speaking of Korra the newest Korra episode I think is my favorite Korra episode so far and I'm not really sure why I just don't know because again I know I've I know I've said this before but you know Avatar The Last Airbender was about you know a uh, a world problem. It was, you know, fate of the world, dire consequences, and it was very magical. There was a lot of, like, mysticism to it. Whereas Korra is much more industrial and it's political and it appeals to a different mindset. Uh, I think, because I, I highly enjoyed Avatar The Last Airbender and I'm highly enjoying Legend of Korra, but for very different reasons. And I understand why some people have jumped ship and been like, you know what, Korra's not for me. Totally get it. Totally get it. Um, but this episode I loved, I think, because it was... It was not... It was dire for the characters, but it was also still very political. And like, I don't know, it felt like a really good midway point, I think. And, oh my gosh, there was some, there's something that happened in that episode. It made me nerd out so hard. I was just like, this is the best. This is the best. This is the best thing ever. I had to pause it. I, had to pause it. I love earthbenders. Earthbenders are my favorite benders. I think they are the best benders. Uh, if I were to scale the benders, like, coolest to lamest. I love them all, and I think they're all very useful. But in terms of which one I would want, it would go earthbending, airbending, firebending, waterbending. Any of you that that feel very simpatico with waterbenders, I'm sorry, that's just not who I am. I don't think that I could ever be a waterbender, and I have no desire to be a waterbender. But earthbenders, dude, earthbenders are the best! They are so awesome. Toph was my favorite character from Avatar The Last Airbender. Bolin, 
and Lin Bei Fong are my favorite characters <laughs> from Korra. And I feel like, man, well, no, Korra is one of my favorite characters as well. I really like her. I think that, I think that the character development for everybody is very believable. Uh, Korra has, like, there's so many moments where you can see the, the child in Korra, but she's also, like, trying to have all, you know, take on all this responsibility, but sometimes she still reacts impulsively, as is her character. It's just, I really like, in both, in both shows, in Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, I really like the way that they've, um, they kept true to the way that characters that are that age might act, given given a scenario in which they accepted a lot of responsibility and they were able to handle that responsibility, but sometimes, you know, their their choices are affected by their age. Yeah, does that make sense? Was that, did that take too long to explain? Probably. Um, but I, that's why I love Korra. She's super flawed, but I don't know. She's just like, she's such a strong personality. She's just like, yeah, what? Love her. And Bolin is great and just hilarious. Bolin is the Sokka of this show. Just like Mako is the Zuko of this show. You just made them brothers. Why not? <laughs> I, was, I was willing to go with it. I was like, all right, cool. And I want a Pabo. He's just so cute. Fire ferret? Why? Those exist? I want one. I would like to have one. And no, they're not real. There's don't go don't go searching for it thinking it's a real thing. It ain't. There is I can't think of any animal off the top of my head. I can't think of any animal in the Avatar universe that is real. <laughs> they have like weird bird people. <laughs> like you know, birds will just kind of hang out on the sidewalk and like eat things. In this most recent episode, they had like birds with like h human parts. It was so weird. I was like, what are the and then they disappeared and I wanted them to come back I was like can can we revisit whatever that just was I don't know what that was but it was weird and it lasted like a split second I don't even know ah <sighs> so so as you can tell uh I've been thinking a lot about Cora today <laughs> But I've also been watching a lot of, oh, it's so fun to rewatch the first season of Adventure Time. It's so fun. Rewatched the very first Marceline episode. I was like, oh, Marceline, remember back when? Do you remember yourself? Man, I love knowing that it started off as a D&D &D game. That will never get old for me, knowing that that was a D&D &D game. Although I do, I am super jelly. I'm always like, man, I want to be, why can't I be part of that game? Why couldn't I have been part of the Adventure Time D&D game? Did you guys know that Adventure Time is taking place in a post-apocalyptic world? If you know that, and then rewatch some of the episodes, it's incredible how obvious it is. I did not know that until I was told, uh, I was told a while ago, but at the time that I was told I wasn't watching it, and I hadn't caught up. And so now rewatching the first episodes, I was like, <laughs> it is so obvious. It's such an obviously post-apocalyptic world, but I never noticed it when I was first watching it. And I'm not sure how, how did I not notice that? It's so blaringly obvious. <sighs> I guess, yeah, I wasn't looking for it. I'm not the type of person who analyzes like, mm, I guess that's not entirely true. I do a certain amount of analyzing when I'm watching a show, but especially a show like Adventure Time that's so random anyway, I don't question a lot, I guess is the right way to put it. When I watch Adventure Time, I don't question anything that happens if, you know, mountains talk in that show. <laughs> mountains are people in that show. <laughs> like, you can't question a whole lot. Um, but it's interesting. It's an interesting... Uh, way to look at the world. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. I don't understand why they think Cartoon Network. What up? My name's Dodger. I would like to tell you a simple fact. If you put Adventure Time on DVD, not like episode, random episodes that you think people like. No, no, no. If you 
made DVD box sets of their seasons, which I'm pretty sure as of now you have yet to do. Because last I heard, you guys were like, that wouldn't sell. This is a kid's show. No. If you think that, you do not know your audience very well. People would buy that so quick. Make it. <laughs> just, just make it. Because people love this show. Why wouldn't you do oh, upsets me. It's just like, oh, it's just like, oh, QI isn't on DVD. They put like the first three seasons of QI on DVD. And then they were like, nobody's buying this. And I went, no. <laughs> I would have bought all of them. I would have bought all of them. QI is great. Anywho, I'm gonna go because we need to head out to watch Game of Thrones. But I hope you guys had an awesome weekend and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye. Mwah. Mwah.